All right, g'day IB psychologists. In this video, I'm gonna talk about one of the best secrets for stress management. Well, it's not really a secret. Loads of psychologists know it, but uh, not a lot of everyday people know it. So we're looking at locus of control. Of all the research I did in stress, this is probably, I think, one of the most important concepts to understand because it will help you manage your stress and you can use it in your everyday life, all right? This comes for under the dispositional factors topic in the stress for IB health psychology unit. So if you're studying along with this, this use, uh, video will be useful, but you might just, I hope you'll find this relevant and interesting anyway, especially if you are trying to figure out how to cope with your stress and, and manage your stress a little bit better. You know, my goal as a teacher is to teach you cool things that one day you will use. I really hope you find locus of control, this concept valuable. So this comes in the topic of determinants of health. Locus of control is a dispositional factor. We'll get to the exam tips at the end of the unit, at the end of the video, sorry. But just a reminder, this comes from the uh, the unit stress for IB health psychology, and it's all included in the ebook and all the other materials. A quick review of where we've been so far. We've looked at the three different uh, three different explanations for stress. Those things are also determinants, dispositional factors, and risk and protective factors. How psychology is great, there's a bunch of overlap. I'll talk about that more at the end of the video. But right now, we're looking at locus of control, which is a cognitive explanation for why some people have high levels of stress. It's also a dispositional factor. It's a health belief, and it's a risk and a protective factor as well. And it's also a determinant of health, so it covers loads of things. In the unit, in the teacher support pack, the lesson plan, there's a space in the workbook which looks like this. Hopefully students can write down risk and protective factors because like I said, there's a whole bunch of overlap uh, in this unit. For example, the COMP gene, C-O-M-T. It's a risk factor if you are a uh, val, val um, met. If you're a met, met homozygote, that's a risk factor, right? You're a warrior. If you're a val, val homozygote, that's a protective factor. Anyway. Uh, this link won't work, of course, because it, you can't click links in videos, but this is in the slides. You can figure out your own uh, in internal, your locus of control scale. But first, let's figure out what do I mean by locus of control? Okay, this is the extent to which you think circumstances are within your control. So it dates back to the 1950s, where actually it comes from Rodder's 1954 social learning theory, where he's used locus of control to suggest the extent to which you think the rewards you get in life are based on internal factors, what you do, and external factors, your environment. So it's internal versus external, you versus the world, right? So, and that's it, internal, external locus of control. Now, this has been applied to lots of different areas. So for example, an academic locus of control. Do you think your grades, your IB exam score, is going to be based on 100% on all your work, right? Like the work that you do, how much effort, study, your factors? That's an internal locus of, internal academic locus of control. If you think it's about how you get graded, how good your teacher is, how good your textbook were, how good the YouTube videos are, then this is an external locus of control. You think it's based on factors beyond your control, external to yourself. So locus of control has been applied to lots of different things. We're looking at health locus of control. The extent to which you think your health is based on internal or external factors begin thinking which one do you think is going to be correlated to better physical and mental health internal believing you have control or external believing it's the environment all right so uh here's the answer when it comes to stress an internal locus of control uh, leads to lower levels of stress and better health outcomes it's better to believe that things are within your control than think that things are beyond your control so let's we want to understand First, that is what locus of control is. Now we need to go to the how. How does locus of control relate to stress? I've just given you the answer and then we'll look at a key study here, right? So Horner, 1996, uh, 173 participants. I tried really hard to find studies that ruled based on uh, adolescence, but it's there's not a lot of studies on adolescence when it comes to stress, uh, most of them are in adults. But anyway, mostly females. Um, basic correlational study here right internal locus of control um the, the locus of control scale so this is just a questionnaire that you can take that figures out where you are now remember locus of control is a continuum it's not like your external or internal right we can vary on that continuum and also we can vary based on the context some people might have an internal health locus of control and an external academic locus of control anyway they did a questionnaire 
So remember, anytime you do a correlational study, you're going to get two, two co-variables. So one was uh, the locus of control scale, and the other is the perceived stress scale. That's why I really like this study. It's really basic, right? Does locus of control link with stress? Well, let's measure stress. Let's le measure locus of control. Okay, and they gathered some other data as well. Now, point three, positive correlation between external locus of control and perceived stress. Now, why is this study so old? Why don't I find a newer study that does this? Well, because this correlation has been so widely studied and it's so consistently found in the research that not a lot of people would conduct studies nowadays because it, we just know it, right? It would be like doing an MRI to see do people have brains. Well, we just, I mean, it's an exaggeration, but we just know it, it exists, right? Okay, so more external locus of control, higher perceived stress. So an internal locus of control was associated with increased illness and individuals who believe that they have little control over events in their life were found to be more vulnerable to illness when compared to individuals believing in personal control. If you think things happen to you and they're beyond your control, you put yourself at risk of mental health problems. All right, it's, it's really important. Now, again, though, this is just a generality, okay? We all have a bit of a mixture okay so the how right so there's some evidence to, to show internal locus of control links with higher stress more at risk for illness right this is health psychology now why well there's lots of possible reasons it's great if you can think of your own right why does this correlate but let's look at a study conducted on teenagers in iran right so they did a random selection 10 schools across a city in iran and i don't know the city sorry but i know it wasn't tehran uh and they use questionnaires to gather data on locus of control and health related behaviors. Now this is another correlational study, but it could give us an indication as to why locus of control is linked with stress. What they found out, positive correlation between internal health locus of control and health promoting behaviors. That means the more you believed health was in your control, the more these teenagers did health promoting behaviors like they took care of their diet and they ate well and they exercised. Um, individuals with external health, health locus of control, so meaning their health was based on chance or powerful others, that means like those in society or even perhaps it's fate or God, they had lower rates of health promoting behaviors. Okay, so from the study, the researchers concluded that, quote, the stronger the internal health locus of control, the higher health promoting behaviors, which subsequently leads to prevention of diseases. Now, I believe in the textbook, I mentioned specifically what those behaviors were, but from memory, it was things like, you know, diet and exercise. Hopefully now in your workbooks, right, if you're doing this as a unit um, for school, right, you're studying, you can explain how and why locus of control influences stress. And now there's a section there in the workbooks to, to write down ways that you can try to cope with stress. And one of locus of control is really valuable, right? Because we can focus on the factors we can control and ignore those we can't. And that comes back to the serenity prayer, right? God, grant me the strength, the wisdom to know the difference. God, I, how does it go? Google the serenity prayer. Man, God, Grant me, it's so hard to think to think and talk and be conscious that you're being recorded. Ah, okay, serenity prayer, I'll come back to it in another video. But basically it's focus on the things you control and ignore the things you can't, right? And have the wisdom to know the difference. That's the gist. All right, now when it comes to the exams, locus of control is a cognitive explanation. Now the other cognitive explanation in this unit was appraisals and that can get really tricky. So locus of control I actually prefer for cognitive explanations of stress. Now it's also a risk and protective factor, okay? One group is, one end of that spectrum is at risk, one end is protective, internal, external, risk, protective, right? You should be able to figure out which is which. It's a determinant of health because it's a factor that can influence your health. It's a dispositional factor because it's an internal mental process. So we can see with this one topic, we can cover loads of different exam topics. All of this is in the bundle, which is available, link in the description. We've got the ebook, you've got the revision guide, you've got the audio book, you've got the flashcards, you've got the example essays, everything there. If you're a student and you wanna learn about stress for health psychology, send the link to your teacher and say, hey, maybe check this out. If your teacher is interested as well, all the planning's done there for them. We've got the blog and Facebook groups and this YouTube channel, of course. I am trying to create videos that align with the textbook to make your lives a little bit easier. And so you can watch videos and recap as well. But I'm also trying to make videos and cover content, which is just interesting, right? And that's why I love this unit on stress because it's so relevant and interesting and applicable. 
My job with thematic education is to create content that's going to help students learn cool stuff that one day they will use. All right. I hope that did the trick. Coming up next, we're going to look at the health belief model. This is a key model in the unit on stress and stress and one of the topics in IB health psychology. All right. Stay tuned.